If the Earth were one centimeter closer to the Sun, it would burn. Or if it were one centimeter further away, it would freeze. I am sure you have heard this rumor as well. In fact, this claim is completely baseless. Because of its elliptical orbit, the Earth already moves 5 million kilometers away from and closer to the Sun every year. So this popular rumor is not true. But if you want, I can tell you something much more interesting. In this universe we are in, there are such precisely measured values that if they varied not even by one centimeter, but by trillion times, trillion times, trillion times, trillion times, trillionth of one centimeter, there would be no life, not only on Earth, but nowhere in the universe. There are four fundamental forces in physics. Gravitational force, electromagnetic force, weak nuclear force, and strong nuclear force. For 13.8 billion years, since the birth of the universe we call the Big Bang, all matter in the universe has been sustained by these laws and constants of physics. The constants of physics are the constant values of the speed or strength of the laws of physics at work in the universe. We already know these things. But the first thing that surprised us was this. In the second half of the 20th century, in the 1970s, physicists for the first time began to ask the question, can chemistry explain the complex systems found in life, and what is the probability that it can? This research was significant because the physicists searching for an answer to this question realized that it was almost impossible for chemistry to explain such complex systems. The laws and constants of physics were almost in an extremely fine-tuned equilibrium. So they called it the fine-tuning argument. And it was first written in the form of scientific articles by Martin Rees, one of the most famous astrophysicists in the United Kingdom. And it was accepted and published in world-renowned scientific journals such as Nature. And it went over with a bang in the scientific world. Because with this research, we realized that if the laws of physics in the universe did not exist or were not at their current constants, life could never exist anywhere in the universe. Let's look at this a little more closely with another example. There is a gravitational force in the universe. This means that anything with mass bends spacetime and pulls matter toward it. Without gravity, hydrogen and helium could not come together and stars could not form. Without stars, heavy metals such as carbon, calcium, iron and other heavy metals that make up the planets would not form and elements and chemistry would not exist. Then, no chemistry means no life. So without gravity, there would be no life. Let's look at the electromagnetic force. It is the magnetic force that causes electrons to spin around protons to form atoms. If this electromagnetic force did not exist, atoms could not form, chemical bonds could not form, light could not form, and therefore life could not exist. This case is also valid for the strong nuclear force. It is the force that holds together protons, neutrons, and even the quarks that make up protons. Without the strong nuclear force, there would be no atoms other than hydrogen, no chemistry, and no life. Or without the weak nuclear force, which governs radioactive decay in the nucleus of the atom, stars could not burn their fuel, heavy elements could not form, chemistry could not form, light could not form, and so there would be no life in the universe. So each of these forces must be present for life to exist. More interestingly, it is not enough to have these forces they must also be finely tuned. For example, if the gravitational constant decreased by one part in 10 to the 60, that is, if a number with 60 zeros after one decreased by only one unit, no planet larger than a soccer ball could form in the universe. If the gravitational constant were to increase by one part in 10 to the 60, there would be large planets, but there would be no living beings on those planets. They would immediately disintegrate from the force of gravity and collapse in on themselves. But it is set on such a precise scale that it seems impossible to attribute it to chance. In fact, the philosopher Robin Collins explains the impossibility of this happening by chance with the following analogy. Put a coin anywhere in the universe and shoot it in a random direction and the bullet will go on and on without losing speed. The probability of hitting that coin at the edge of the universe is greater than the probability of gravity randomly occurring at that value. 
or consider the cosmic expansion rate of the universe. If the cosmological constant were to increase by one part in 10 to the 120, the universe would scatter all over the place so that neither matter, nor stars, nor elements, nor life could form. Or if the cosmological constant were to decrease by 1 in 10 to the 120, the universe would collapse in on itself. Neither atoms nor stars could form, and therefore life could not exist. By the way, in order to understand how high this value is, you can compare it to number of seconds since the beginning of time, which equals about to 10 to the 20. We can understand this better with an example. Let us imagine a ruler that is divided into units as small as a trillion times a trillionth of a centimeter, and its length is the width of space, which is 93 billion light years. For life to exist on this cosmological constant scale, the scale has to be brought to a single place. Otherwise, life cannot exist anywhere else. And we see that for some reason, the value of the cosmological constant has been brought right there. Let's take an example of the fine tuning of the initial entropy of the universe. Being According to Professor Roger Penrose, an Oxford so physicist, the distribution of mass and energy that allows life to exist is 1 divided by 10 to the 10 to the 123. This is the highest value in the history of physics. It is even impossible to write down because there are more zeros in this number than there are particles in the entire universe. So if we add up all the protons, electrons, and neutrons in the universe, we still cannot reach that number because the estimated total number of particles in the universe is 10 to the 87. So even if we write a zero on every electron and proton in the universe, we still cannot write down the number 10 to the 10 to the 123. Even if the initial entropy of the universe was 1 in 10 to the 10 to the 123 different, life would not be able to exist. However, it has been adjusted to exactly those values and made suitable for the existence of life. The fine-tuning of the existence and constants of these physical laws is too extraordinary to be attributed to chance, because in a situation that something is chosen among many probabilities for a specific purpose, the most logical thing to do is to look for a consciousness behind it. For example, if a person won the national lottery 50 billion times in a row, would we call it chance or would we look for an intention, a consciousness behind it? By the way, this example is much more likely to happen. Because we are talking about such a fine tuning, even if you keep saying one in a billion, one in a billion, one in a billion for an hour straight, you cannot reach its numerical value. Of course, after this discovery in physics, many scientists accepted this precise adjustment as a signature of the creator of the universe. And this discovery discovery in the world of science has led many atheist scientists to accept the Creator. Even if they do not believe, many atheist physicists have admitted that the most reasonable interpretation of this is not coincidence, but design orchestrated by the divine power. Some 20 years ago, when I began my career as a cosmologist some 20 years ago, I was a convinced atheist. I never in my wildest dreams imagined that one day I would be writing a book purporting to show that the central claims of Judeo-Christian theology are in fact true, that these claims are straightforward deductions of the laws of physics as we now understand them. I have been forced into these conclusions by the inexorable logic of my own special branch of physics. I must stress that my discovery of the divine has proceeded on a purely natural level, without any reference to supernatural phenomena. In short, my discovery of the divine has been a pilgrimage of reason not of faith. The integrated complexity of life itself, which is far more complex than the physical universe, can only be explained in terms of an intelligent source. I do not believe that any scientists who examined the evidence would fail to draw the inference that the laws of nuclear physics have been deliberately designed with regard to the consequences they produce inside stars. For the scientist who has lived by faith in the power of reason, the story ends like a bad dream. He has scaled the mountains of ignorance. He is about to conquer the highest peak. As he pulls himself over the final rock, he is greeted by a band of theologians who have been sitting there for centuries. If the rate of expansion one second after the Big Bang had been smaller by even one part in a hundred thousand billion, the universe would have re-collapsed before it ever reached its present state. The surprising fact is, the values of these numbers seem to be tuned very precisely to ensure the development of life. That's, that's right. That's the one which is really on a knife edge. Okay? It is on such a narrow knife edge that it's almost inconceivable 
If you were to change it just the tiniest, tiniest bit, we couldn't be here. Whatever made the universe, I hate to say whoever you made the universe, <laughs> but whoever made the universe made it with an incredibly small, tiny cosmological constant. Which, which do you favor? I am, as I think is known, of a theistic inclination, but the reason for that is not because of the multiverse and so on. It is partly because of the fine tuning, because, as you've said, one of the options here is a theistic one. The whole thing was intended to be that way. So, do you think we got lucky? Is all this fine tuning of the universe the result of chance? I think there is no need to deceive ourselves. Instead, it is most reasonable and logical to recognize our Lord, who wants to introduce himself to us with this huge and meaningful universe book. Powerful evidence that there is something going on behind it all. It seems as though somebody has fine-tuned nature's numbers to make the universe. The impression of design is overwhelming. The Big Bang is not just an explosion, but a very well-calculated and organized creation of the universe, which was created out of nothing, and delicately balanced with the exactly the conditions required to support life, becomes convinced that the absence of unthirdly improbable accidents, the observations of Mark and Sarah, the suggestion of the universe, the 